Hello, my gorgeous souls. Oh, my goodness. Am I excited for today? I've already given her a stellar introduction before we've even got in here. But welcome, Mills. I am so excited to have you on the podcast. Who are you? What do you do? And why are you here? (laughs) Oh, my God. I am so excited to be on this podcast because I have to say, and I know like a lot of people say this, but when I started working with you, I was like, oh, she's got a podcast. I better listen. And then I just binge loads. I was like, I want to be on that podcast. (laughs) Um, So I'm I'm thrilled. Um, So my name is Mills. I am a business coach and a mentor. Why am I here? I've been working with you since, oh gosh, I think it was just before Christmas, November. November. Yes. And um, yeah, well, we can dive into it. Into, mm-hmm. into more about that. <laughs> yes, let's get straight in. Um, yes, I remember the conversation we had when we, like Prius, even working together, and I knew you were the one <laughs> when we were even having those conversations because you were so aware, you were so knowing and understanding of what's going on in the business and where you were home. Oh. <laughs> I mean, can you even believe it? I've got it on do not disturb and an alarm's gone off. Oh, is it an alarm? (laughs) Oh, shitting hell. Too good. No, it's fine. (laughs) Nicola, just delete this bit. Uh, (laughs) Um... I'll, I'll go from the DM bit. Uh, so we were straight in on the DMs and very, very pleased. You were the, the most ideal dreamy client for me. You were very aware of what was going on. You knew exactly the blockages and where you were stopping yourself and what you wanted that to look like. Tell the listeners where you were when you kind of reached out, what was going on from a mindset perspective, strategy in the business, et cetera. Yes. And, uh, and I appreciate you saying like that awareness, because I feel like I I am super aware of the fact that I was at a place where I was like, yeah, this is great. It's good, but I'm not where I want to be. And I've, I've felt like that for quite a few years. And I don't, you know, there's part of me that's like, is that just because I'm super driven and nowhere's ever going to be like where I want to be? So that always used to play a little bit of a part. But I reached out to a friend of mine that you have been working with. And I... I I didn't even know that you'd been working together because you I don't think you've done a podcast at this stage. I just said, who like recommend me some mindset coaches? <laughs> because I knew it was mindset, because I've got a lot of strategy behind me. And I was like, I just don't need any more strategy. Yeah. Although we'll get into that. I do feel like <laughs> I have like definitely changed quite a lot there. But I was like, I just want mindset. I just need mindset. I'm like all about just really, really focusing on mindset. And she gave me three people and I actually only just looked at you and I was like, okay, cool. This one, this, this one looks perfect. <laughs> and um, I remember I was at a swimming competition and I just like, uh, my daughter was at a swimming competition and um, I just reached out and we had a few like kind of back and forth messages. I was like, cool, I'm in. <laughs> like I just knew. This message. I, I think we like decided you'd signed up and the contracts had been signed. I was on the way to my goddaughter's christening and like it was from the journey home to the journey there it was done <laughs> hilarious um and I kind of like that I like that speediness and I I often I, I will always say like I want my clients to be like that but I felt perhaps like frustrated a little bit stagnant and from the outside people were like oh you're doing so great and I and I was doing I was doing well like there's no doubt about it in comparison to perhaps where I had been like three years previous yeah but I just wanted more. Um, and I felt like I kind of had my sweatpants on. I was in comfy zone, maybe a little bit kind of, la- I don't want to say lazy because lazy is not the right word to use, but just no. com- just comfortable, yeah. not really being pushed. And there was something that was just blocking me. Yeah. And I think yeah. I see that a lot in that you get into that comfort, especially when the business is kind of doing well and you're kind of on, you're doing things and things are happening. Um, But you know inside, and I think like a trait of pretty, well, every single one of my clients is that there are, they are high achievers. So like we, we don't like to settle, but it is very easy to get into that comfort. And there are so many people who say, oh, is it because I'm lazy? And you know, consciously, and subconsciously that you're not lazy in that aspect. Um, But it does start to feel like that because it becomes so like stagnant and there was kind of no momentum was there. Mm. I think that was what you were 
lacking it was that momentum momentum and also I think there was like a money mindset blog Mm. that was really I just hate that whole kind of like bro marketing and I was I hated it so much that I was shying away from it that I was almost like Am I allowed to? I was suddenly like, is that rude, rude to say? I was going to say, I'm like, I was cock blocking my own. You cock block all the time. <laughs> you, you say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the real bro marketing style. No, so I was just like, how do I feel like good about making that kind of money without sounding like showy offy? And then I, I kind of, the more I've been working with you, the more I'm like, well, look, you are absolute proof of that. You don't talk about your finances really hardly ever Mm -hmm. it's clear that you're doing well it's clear that you're successful I just want like I want to be able to do that and I think the the idea of this like you know Lamborghinis and and happening in nanoseconds just was frustrating me and so therefore I was playing small because of it Mm. and and kind of stopping yourself from ever really stepping into that because it was almost like you you wanted you wanted the wealth yeah. and you wanted the clients and you wanted, it's more life experiences and freedom for you, wasn't it? Than anything, which I know we'll get into, but it was equally yeah. like, how do I show that without showing whether it's the Stripe notifications or the Lamborghini or the bags, you know, all of that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. So to show a few Stripe yeah. notifications, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but well, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so when we, when we kind of first started, what were some of the biggest shifts from a mindset perspective that you felt, because we did a lot of mindset work at the beginning, didn't we? Mm -hmm. It was quite intense with you really stepping into this person that you wanted to become, that you wanted to be. Yeah. I mean, I remember, (laughs) I do remember one session when we did a bit of like um, timeline therapy and I found myself kind of like breaking trauma of like my grandfather and my great grandfather. Generations (laughs) back. Here here we go. (laughs) We this, are is in. A, this is a fun Tuesday. <laughs> I'm meeting a grandpa I've never met. <laughs> dealing, like dealing with that shit. Um, <laughs> but I think um, really understanding, like a, a big thing was like I sort of had to prove myself. That really mm. came up quite a lot, and in and it showed up in all aspects, and and kind of like letting go of just stuff that is just not serving, wasn't serving me. Um, and it's really, I've ch- I feel like I've changed my whole identity as a coach through oh, doing that. Mad. It's been yeah. mad. And we've got the, the Mills 2.0, which we speak about a lot. And I think yeah. I remember that was a little bit further in. Mills started with me for one month and then we went yeah. three months and now we're here for six <laughs> months, which is usually what happens when people come in. <laughs> And, and there's a little bit of me that part of that was like, oh, my mindset's okay. I probably just need six weeks. And um, and then it was like, well, no, this is fun. Let's go a little bit longer. And I really do feel like we have completely, like we just keep, it keeps evolving. Yes. And also with the strategy as well. But yeah. the mindset stuff, I was kind of, I feel like I'm just seeing like everything through like a new lens. Um but there was always this like I don't really want to work a whole load harder and so yes. that was kind of quite a big thing for me yes um yeah. but but yeah we've we've kind of like we've navigated through that completely um and mindset wise it's just been an interesting journey I've done a lot with my kind of I, I feel like I've done a lot with my mindset over the last probably 15 years but I've never consistently um kind of like like the part stuff and things like that like really Mm. recognizing and being able to ask myself like deeper questions and sit with it and I think before I was probably a little bit like bypassing stuff that came up yes (laughs) would do things to like you know oh that's fine we'll we'll just put that there that's fine for later Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and I think because of the time that we've had together you've you've actually had and I've seen physically in front of me three or four iterations of you and the business and Mm -hmm. the up levels and it really has like I mean we're probably on Mills 4.0 to be honest (laughs) right now but you know like there's there's been so many iterations where we hit this we have we have what we call the sessions inside my container and every client has like a couple of the sessions that really change the game and I remember that one where it was just you 
fully fucking claiming you and Mm -hmm. that was like it gives me goosebumps if you're watching the video like if I just remember that conversation that we had and it was literally more of a more of a mentorship conversation than let's break through beliefs or you know like it was more you really stepping in and claiming that but what happened then from from a social media point of view from a type of client point of view I think really changed the game for you. Do you want to speak into to that kind of that session and then what happened as a domino effect from that? Yeah, and I think actually there were a couple of those sessions. Um and I remember like talking to you. It was about my branding. Yes. And you said, "Are you going to do like a big fanfare for your branding?" And I was like, "I don't really think people give a fuck." And you're like, and when we just started talking like that and we were sort of laughing about it and you were like I think you should show more of that personality and it was suddenly like I don't know it was like a light switch being like turned on and I was like because that is in me right yeah. <laughs> my friends see it my kids see it my family like everyone sees that why am I not kind of really showing that as mm. a as a coach um And that really helped me to then, I feel like that was a bit of a domino into really getting crystal clear on what I do. And and for a long time, anyone I work with, I'm like, how do I help you? And they're like, oh my God, in so many ways. You did this, you did that. And I'm always like, I know that I can offer so much, but I also know that in marketing, that's, you can't just really say that. Mm. Like you have to kind of be clear and through us working together I've really really identified the things that I'm just fucking good at and that should be celebrated yeah and that comes a little bit with me like owning it and not being like showy offy and braggy but just being like well I just know that's true yeah. <laughs> like that's and it that's that. yeah and I think <laughs> like from that when you kind of opened that part of yourself and started bringing that part of yourself online and having the understanding of, you know, we've got these three pillars for you now and where how you speak into them, which we'll kind of get into a little bit later, but how you then draw upon your own success and the success for your clients really allowed you to like become this full embodiment, which then stopped playing into the belief of I have to be this showy offy bro yeah. marketing. It really gave you that permission, didn't it? Online. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think well and this is no disrespect to the clients that I had been working with um I I was really so I started with a group coaching that I've been doing for like three years I was like that's my baby don't want to give it up to kind of giving that up and (laughs) moving on but it's like I've there were lots of things that happened in the process to kind of allow me to do that without feeling like I was letting them down. Mm. And when I gave myself that permission to be like, actually, you are needing to serve a different type of client, that that also kind of like unleashed, like just creativity, a difference in vibe, a difference in like showing up. Like, and I really like, if I look at it, my offers change, my content's change, my stories have yeah. changed. <laughs> um, my identity of a coach has changed. Uh, I'm just one new person. <laughs> yeah, I've done like two launches. What the hell? <laughs> Mills was like, I don't launch. I don't. I don't, I don't want to launch. <laughs> yeah, I don't launch, and you know that's just where we're at. <laughs> It's too good. But yeah, yeah, I think kind of like having that permission really not only allowed you to align your business with actually what what you actually wanted, which I see so often within my containers, because without the subconscious work, you are really performing and, and showing up and behaving from a program of what you think you should do or what you think it should look like or what you believe that to be. And I think the moment that we kind of broke that down for you and you were like, actually, it can look however the fuck I want and I can do, make that decision. Yeah. That was really when all of these things started to fall into place, wasn't it? Completely. And actually, the thing is, is that I, it's <clears throat> not, I was being inauthentic before. I was still very not much being me. But by, it's almost like the jigsaw puzzle. It was like, there were just a few things that just needed like, you know, like when a piece goes in and it kind of doesn't quite fit, but you could just squeeze it in. It felt a little bit like that. And now it just doesn't feel like that. It feels like everything is just happening exactly how it should be. And I think without making those changes of, of just stepping up and being 
able to be more spicy meals. <laughs> Let's just call it That's spicy what meals. Call that. <laughs> <laughs> what it means. <laughs> um, it's it's just like it's just flowed. It's just it's suddenly flowing, and and it's the again the awareness that I wasn't wasn't not being me before. I've just opened up a new version of me. Yes. You know? which in turn has started to attract and we'll kind of celebrate this in a moment, but started to attract like some insane opportunities and insane ways of doing things in your business, you know, bringing in the passive course and Mm -hmm. letting go of the the group course and bringing Mm -hmm. in the one-to-one clients and, and all of that and actually still keeping your freedom because I know that was such a huge value for you and I wanted to speak into that a little bit because I know a lot of people have this fear on the way to growing their business and scaling their business that you then work harder you then Mm -hmm. have less time and actually Mm -hmm. you know one of your big messages is that you can go shopping with your daughter for a birthday and get 15 new leads in and that's just how it can be how did you find navigating really stepping into who you wanted to be but then also kind of keeping that freedom and keeping the life that you wanted yeah really good question because I have and anyone listening like I've been hustle mills and I didn't like it and you know I was hustle mills for a long time um and like she's still there it's just understanding that it doesn't need, you know, she doesn't need to play her role. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so a while before working with you, I was very much like, which is why I was kind of plateaued and lazy, because I was like, I've got rid of hustle, but it's not quite hitting the mark of where yeah. I want to be. Yeah. But I just have really strong boundaries, or as much as I can. I, I do break my boundaries. Let's, let's be real. I do break my boundaries. But I'm very much like, look, I start work at 10 and I finish at like three. And if I want to do something extra after three, I will, but I'm not going to schedule anything. conscious choice, yeah. 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 And so that started with saying, I'm never going to do coaching calls after three o'clock. And I've just stuck to it. And I try and help my clients to get those boundaries in place because there's always shit to do right if you you could carry on doing and doing and doing but it doesn't mean that it's it's yielding you the results you want and so making it really clear what does your life want to look like do you believe that you can make more money without having to work harder and that's that's definitely something that I I talk about with myself I go through I like yeah yeah. um and and I want to be able to I want to be able to like yesterday I mean I'm really sunburned because it's like the first (laughs) glimmer of sun and me and my mate were like it's sunshine should we go to like we were were both members of this club and it's got an outdoor pool and we were like yes let's go and I was like okay I'm just gonna I like having that and without that what is the point in life that's what I feel anyway and that's really come from historical kind of mills, really. I, you know, I used to teach scuba diving. I broke the mold. I left corporate. I was just like, I don't want to be like your average Joe. <laughs> I'm just going to do things differently and follow what internally is guiding me to do. And and work not working all the time is one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. And yeah. I think like you then matching the business to that was the, matching to the matching the business to that, but with the results that you wanted was a huge yes. shift, wasn't it? Because you matched the business to it, but then kind of, that's when the stag stagnation yes. and the lazy came in, wasn't it? Yes. Like so I was matching before. it before, but I wasn't <clears> quite getting the the sort of cash that I wanted. If yeah. we just like <laughs> put it put it as it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about a couple of the edges that we went to and that we still go to as we are still working together. But yes, one of the edges was this live podcast event that you really wanted to put on and turned out to be the most insane, incredible experience for you like me watching you go through that from like how you started and how you felt about it. And I know you've talked about this, but like kind of going into that bloody selling out within three minutes. Like I remember being in box and I was like, I can't keep up with the ticket sales. <laughs> like I would I go away for, for like a couple of hours, come back in and she would be like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> and another, and another, and another. <laughs> and another. Um, to then kind of getting there and doing that and then the repercussions of what's happened after that. Do you want to speak into that a little bit? Because I think that was a real breakthrough moment for you as well to show what it could look like and what you could be doing. Yeah, 100%. And 
And I feel that like it's really helped mold into my pillars as well, mm. because lead generation is definitely something that I know I'm good at and I do all the time. And I do organic and I also do paid um, in terms of how leads come into my world. And we were discussing a podcast event, which I, I have to give credit to one of my clients suggested it to me. She was like, why don't you do a live podcast? I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And there was something just not quite driving me to do it because I was going to do it in London and it's just all these things. And, and I'm a generator in human design. I have to, I have to be a hell yes. Otherwise I just, it's a no, no. Just, it's a no. <laughs> yeah. And the idea was a hell yeah. Everything was a hell yes, except something just wasn't quite clicking. And we had a session and you were like, why don't you just do it locally? I was like, oh my God, you're giving me permission Please. to do it locally. <laughs> <laughs> why don't I just do it locally? And I think it was just, the importance of understanding that I have a big audience and trusting that I could fill those spaces was a big part of just like, okay, and actually what happens if I don't fill those spaces? Um, you know, what, what where's the win? Like, yeah. it's just like, look at, it's not that big a deal, right? Yeah. And And so getting really clear on what it was, what the day would look like. And there were different, there were different stages of business owners that attended. So it was like trying to really match that, but also raise my authority at the same time, um, which I feel like it just, it worked. It worked. It and then did. the fact that it, so it sold out in like four days, I was like, that's epic. I yeah. need to reflect on why that is. And I, I really put it down to a good marketing message, having people in my world already, um, you know, that just tick, tick. You have to have that. I think you have to have that. And part of my messaging is very much like you just can't rely on the same 100 people, 500 people, whatever that All looks time. like in your, on your, yeah, you just can't sell to the same people because hoping that the next post or the next email is the thing that's going to push, you know, push them to sign up is just not a strategy. So you just have to keep filling your, your world of new leads. And, and so the fact that I'd done that, it was like, this is confirmation that I've just, I've got it all here like let's go <laughs> let's go yeah and yeah. I think like you you doing that and I think almost what I saw when you did that was that you almost kind of came out of your body and was like oh yeah, yeah that was bloody brilliant like yeah. look at us go like you had that real moment mm. of properly standing in <clears throat> in your success in what it was in how you did it in then what happened afterwards and the clients that have come in and the kind of that big boom and momentum again in your world. And I think that that was a real showing for you of how you can do different things and do it differently and in a different way and people really wanting to be there. Yeah. And, and, I, and trust is such a big part of that because, you know, last year I had a sold out retreat, which was amazing. Didn't take four days to sell out. It took, you know, eight months but that's mm -hmm. cool you know yeah but I I think when you can then get evidence that things work it's almost again it's like why wouldn't you why yes. wouldn't you just keep yeah. on going and keep yeah. on trying and do different things like the launches you know I don't launch I don't launch but <laughs> but actually that energy once in a while right. is quite fun yeah <laughs> and I think the trust muscle was a huge muscle that we flexed with you wasn't it it yeah. was like trusting that like p the right people are there, that people are coming into your world, that that's what it looks like for you. What what has been, I don't, maybe it's timeline therapy in parts, but like what's been the biggest um, or one of your favorite mindset practices that has helped these changes? Because I think sometimes people are like, wow, I can really resonate with where she was, but like, oh my God, like she now has this trust and this new identity and she's showing up and everything like that. And I think sometimes just allowing them to see what bridged that gap for you. What would that be if you kind of looked at that? I know it's probably not one specific thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think with the trust, we had a, a really good session where it's like I am prepared to put my head above the parapet in so many ways and have done like for my whole life, um, regardless of what people think and and you know, that happened in COVID, it happened when I left my job and went and traveled and, and people always have an opinion, right? And I was mm -hmm. never, I just was not, I just trusted myself. I knew that I knew myself better than anybody else. And it was not transferring to business life. And that's where it's like, that was a real 
that really was the big bridge of like, mm-hmm. hang on, Mills, you trust yourself in so many other ways. Let's just cross the bridge to do that in business. And so that was actually more of like a session. But the parts work, I feel like is probably my most favorite because <laughs> I enjoy like the idea of like my little characters that all have like <laughs> funny outfits or like, you know, the hustle has a briefcase, you know, like it's just like I'm quite visual and to me that just it, it works it's like okay let's look at is this a part coming into like a manager part or a firefighter part um and then being brave enough to just kind of sit there and ask like what do you want what do you want what are you here for <laughs> yeah, yeah what are you here for and, and actually listening to them and I remember doing a, a session with you where I was like it I, I welled up like I was crying maybe not like booing but I was definitely emotional because they just wanted to be like listened to and heard and I was like okay I'm really sorry and like yeah. this sort of irony from a coach perspective is you have to listen so why wasn't I listening to, to myself to myself yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember that being a real poignant moment that you then took into outside of our session which is I, I think such a big thing for me as your coach and the clients that I work with is to give you the tools where you don't need to be in Voxer with me all the time walking through a mindset and that does happen at the beginning because so, you're getting used to knowing what questions to ask etc but there was there were so many instances after that session where you were like oh just spoke to them this is what they said this is what they're protecting me from this is how I've moved through it and things were shifting so much quicker weren't they from that point on yeah and I and I think that's like um I remember saying about collapsing time and I feel like that has really helped to collapse time and see results is just that real awareness of of what I need to do, what I need to do and what I need to consistently do and not just forget about it. And Mm. I remember once you said like, get a library, a menu of like stuff that you want to do. And that was a bit of a game changer as well. Cause it's like, I'm not a massive journaler. No. I, I, I'm jealous of people who are. Right. <laughs> so, I'm jealous but, of how they can write for that long without the hand. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm just, yeah totally, totally. It's just like, um, but but then just finding other things and, and knowing that I was already doing that, but just making that a bit more regular, mm-hmm. I think also helped with the sort of like collapsing time and just yeah. moving forward. Yeah. yeah. So let's just to wrap up, talk about the collapsing time and the results mm. and mm. what's going on in the business now. Let's do a little yeah. celebration. Yeah, totally. I mean, so uh, when I started with you, I had a group coaching. No, okay, let's rewind. I used to, originally, I started my coaching journey with one-on-one. And then it just came became like really trendy to do a group. <laughs> I think that's really basically what it was. What I was happened? like, okay, cool, I'll do a group. And, um, you know, the, the, the kind of black and whiteness of a group, and I, I think they're great. You do have to have lots of people in your world to consistently fill them, whether you're doing an evergreen or whether you're doing launches, you, you still need the numbers. And I think group sounds amazing because it's you're serving five people in one hour versus five separate hours. Um, but yeah, there are, there are, there are pros and cons to a group, but I had been running my group for three years and I was like, Bex, I'm not stopping my group. <laughs> but I have now shifted away from my group, which will finish in July, like the last co- cohort will will stop in July. And I've been working one on one since kind of probably I'm going to say like January was when we sort of started to bring that in. Yeah, started to bring that in. And I've just really enjoyed getting much deeper, serving a different kind of caliber of client who's maybe ready to kind of go to their 2.0 and scale um and it's just been really successful I've got nine one-on-one clients at the moment which I feel is like I don't know if you'd said that to me a year ago it would have been like what no <laughs> um and like in the last week I signed three in a week and I was like oh here we go that's the reality <laughs> this I, is what I'm looking yeah, for <laughs> yeah and Mills is like a magic magical manifester of just I just know if we have a conversation where she's like so I'm gonna do this this week and I'm like yeah you are yeah. At the end of it, like, and off she goes. Friday comes around, and you're like, "Yes, yeah, so I've just hit this." <laughs> I know it's amazing, and like I, again, like let's celebrate that and not be For like, sure. oh, you know." No, I wanted you to really step into that. Yeah. yeah, and and that's been that has been amazing, and I am like a doer. Like, um, 
you know, I did this podcast event with with somebody who um, the woman who owned the venue, she said, oh, Sophie said to me that, you know, if Mills says she's going to do something, she'll just do it. And I was like, oh, that's such a nice thing to say. Like, I just if it feels right, boom, I'm, I'm all in. I'm yeah. all in. And that is the generator in me. Like, I've, I've, I've learned a lot about my human design and I, I, I really appreciate it. And it's helped me to understand like, not if it's not, yes, just wait. And, you know, yeah. Wait um, it out. Yeah. Wait it out. So, so business is looking good. I had an 8k cash collected week, which I was like, happy days. <laughs> um, and I've got just things are just bubbling. Like just leads are coming in. Yeah, and... Leads are coming in. Inquiries are coming in. And I, I am a big person around like making your time, not wasting time in your business. And so it's like, it's perfect. I know what to do. I have the strategy that I teach. I do myself. Like it's, it's, yes. it's just something that I kind of live by and um, think works really well. And so it's cool. It's, it's about having the right leads coming in as well. Right. And that's just definitely been a big shift. Yeah. Yeah. And I am really, really celebrating you as I always do. I'm like Thank biggest, you. biggest cheerleader, the biggest fan <laughs> yeah. and boxer at all time. <laughs> yeah. Um, you are. You not, we're finished me, you probably. <laughs> you celebrate more than me, I think. Yes. You're like, <laughs> I'm sending all the gifts. Yeah. Um, but there's I just think that there's, you know, the the shift and the changes and literally the up levels, which I think is is why I love the long-term containers more, because especially with the subconscious work you do get to the next level and you're like, wow, okay, well, this is a completely new part and belief that I've never heard before. Let's go again. And you do constantly evolve. And I think that's, you said it earlier in the way of (sighs) happily or unhappily, the subconscious work kind of never ends, which I celebrate that because you're constantly growing and evolving. But I think it also has such a knock on impact on your business. And you've really seen those changes, haven't you? Which has just been so amazing. Yeah. And I mean, like, honestly, I'm going to say this, I've worked with really good coaches and and I always see the value in working with coaches. And I've invested thousands upon thousands, but I can honestly say that out of the five coaches I've worked with, this has been the most transformational for me. (laughs) I'm like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that and I think it's for me seeing you go through that transformation as well like oh it just fills me with with so much joy and I wish I always wish that we could like we, I should do an interview at the very start and then an interview at the very end to just be like like can you imagine the la- like the language that you were saying and how you were showing up and like there's just so much and I think it's only up from here and this, the foundations that you've now got both from like the strategy perspective of the things that we shifted. And again, like you said, it was more refinement, which it always is with my clients. You come in with a business that has a lot of strategy and you know a lot of strategy. It's just refining it. But more than anything, it's the way that you now show up for yourself, to be honest. Yeah, 100%. Isn't it? So, yeah, 100%. Celebrating you, celebrating you. But let's <laughs> have a little dive into you. And I know we've spoke about it a little bit, but I really want for you to have a bit of time to share with the listeners what they need to be doing when it comes to the old three pillars the three that you pillars. have in the business. <laughs> so go through the go through the pillars and if you want we can go from there yeah okay cool um i think first and foremost my absolute drive and this has been since school since i can remember is i just feel like you don't have to fit the mold and be the kind of like oh you have to go to work you have to you know you have to get a mortgage you have to do this you have to do that it's like i think we can trap ourselves so badly by by not having that courage to just go actually i don't like this Mm -hmm. and so my first thing is always like what do you want from your business what does that look like and not what anybody else is telling you like i know i said i've sort of did group coaching because it was like trendy (laughs) to do but it's like what is the thing that you go that is a dream life and for some it is like you know smashing out of the park with hundreds of thousands but for others it's like I want to be able to pick my kids up from school yeah and so that's like a really important first 
port of call I think when growing a business um and I've been an I've been an entrepreneur I actually don't really like the word entrepreneur <laughs> I can't really think of what else to describe it <laughs> you're like I will it. not put myself into that box <laughs> I know it's just like I just sort of think We're of so like, like it's Stephen Bartlett and I'm like I'm not him <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I was, I've been a business owner for 16 years and I've had businesses in lots of different sectors, including retail, including health and wellness, um, property, travel. And so it was, it was kind of like a no brainer to go, actually, I retrained as a coach. Why don't I just look at business coaching? And so that was kind of like where I went. Um, and it's been a journey for sure because I would always say like my first thing is just helping people get clients but what, what the fuck does that look like yes. <laughs> <laughs> um everyone just wants very clients. very broad niche <laughs> yeah very broad niche <laughs> and so I'm really honing in on your numbers like lead generation but before we get to lead generation your offer what you offer is just so so important and so A lot of my clients come with an idea of what they think their offer should look like. But it may, the reason it may not be selling is because people just either don't really understand what it's solving or they just don't need it. And so sometimes just having a really a good look at your offer is, is crucial at whatever stage you're at. And then also, is that scalable? Like, can you, can you actually grow your business in a way that suits your you know, your passion of, of, of why you've started a business with, a, you know, for example, a lot of them go, oh, I sell this thing for like 495. And I'm like, that's amazing. But how on earth are you going how to? How many? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I only need six clients a month. And I'm like, okay, six. Okay. How many people do you have on your list in your world? And they're like, I don't know, a couple of hundred on Insta. And it's like, there has to be a different, like you have to change something. And so the offer is always a good place to start and look. And then the next thing is like, where are your leads coming from? And I love social media and I think social media has its place. And I use I use social media organically. I use it non-organically. Um, but without new people literally coming into your world on the daily, it's hard to sell. It's just a harder position to be in. And so my focus is all about like how to grow your lead gen- like lead generation, how to grow your leads how to speak to the right person, not just the same people who aren't buying yet. Um, And I look at that a lot through different projects, I suppose is the best way to describe it. Um, And and it's very strategy driven because it is like, right. It has to be, yeah. It has to be. Of course, mindset comes into it. And of course, kind of like really understanding who your client is and what keeps them up at night and why do they need you and what's your identity, what sets you apart is is like integral to all of it. Um, but it is quite strategy focused. Um, I'm not an ad specialist, but, you know, I think there's space for ads. If you're wanting to grow and have a life, then you need yeah. an organic. You need to be absolutely crystal clear on your organic strategy. But if you want to go to the spa <laughs> and get sunburn <laughs> and get sunburn you might as well also a random <laughs> Tuesday <laughs> exactly have ads coming in yesterday I think I had 22 ads coming in from a uh, as leads coming in from an ad yeah oh, yeah happy days yeah I spent 30 quid I'd rather really? spend 30 quid than spend five hours <laughs> yeah and I think that's where it kind of gets to what I love how I love the way that you do things is it's that what you said about how do you actually want your business to look and you know is it that you want to be churning out content seven hours a day and doing a hundred lives and podcast Mm -hmm. like all of those things or actually can we be more strategic with what that looks like and I know you talk about this it's like not just the ad it's actually what happens after the ad and then how you funnel them through and I know that's a big part of what you do isn't it yes 100% because the selling part you can have all these leads coming in if you're suddenly like having to do 15 sales calls a day you're not living that dream life you're probably should just go to a call center because out of those 15 (laughs) probably three might be relevant to you and so I look at a selling strategy that just doesn't involve speaking unless you get to that stage and and I think when you and I started working together I I will I do remember you like do you want to jump on a call I was like I don't need to do that I'm just happy and I'm happy in the dms you can get a lot from dms and voice notes 
that you've For just sure. learned. But yeah. there has to be the right strategy of what questions you're asking and, and what that looks like. And I think a lot of people default to just like send a send a, a, a discovery yeah. call link and and you can jump on a call and all of a sudden you're coaching someone for an hour who's not going to buy and you're wasting you're wasting time and so the the selling strategy fits with the lead generation so that you're it's just flowing again without you having to do essential you know time consuming stuff it's like yes which then gives you the life and it's what that one big perfect cycle perfect cycle um, <laughs> and a lot of my clients have gone oh my god I'm I'm now stopping work at three and it feels amazing and I'm like and how's your business and like it's grown and it's like mm. there you are yeah it's that 80 20 rule which seems to work for literally everything I don't know why because I'm not very scientific <laughs> however um you know 80 percent of your results come from 20 percent of your actions so it's like make sure that 20 percent is the right action yeah yeah. And I think that's where people get so hung up, isn't it? Where they're like, oh, like if I want to scale and if I want to grow, then that means I've got to do more. Like that's the general consensus belief that I see across yes. the board. If I want a yes. multi six figure business, I've got to work harder. If I want to do this, I've got to work harder. But actually it's becoming, and this is a big word that I use, more intentional, more intentional with your time, more intentional yeah. with what you're good at as well. I think, you know, there's so many people who go, well, I need all of these things and I need to be omnipresent everywhere. But it's like, okay, intentionally, how are we doing that? And and what does that look like where you, can, you know, you're everywhere, but you're not very rarely online, are you? Yeah, 100%. And also, it's really about finding the thing that vibes with you. And I yeah. think that a lot of people say, oh, get out of your comfort zone, because that's where the magic happens. Yes. But also, if you hate doing masterclasses, let's look at a different, there's, there's freaking yeah. hundreds of ways that you could get clients. It just yeah. don't do what someone's told you you have to do if it makes you feel sick it's mm. like okay let's find another one there's, there's, yeah. there's loads out there <laughs> yeah what where would you say for people to start when it so if they if they have been kind of like pushing out the content and you know it's just like all this like organic I'm mm -hmm. going to say organic slog because sometimes yeah. it can feel like that can't it when you're trying to to grow and especially grow your audience growth it can feel yeah. a little bit heavy where yeah. would you suggest for people to to kind of start with that journey well, I think actually trying to get them off social media is your mm. best bet. So I'm a big believer in like growing your email list. And, and I feel like it's a it's a much less cluttered way of selling and a much um, you're really going into someone's inbox and you're not just relying on an algorithm. I mean, I can't even spell algorithm. Why would I want to rely on it for my business? <laughs> It's a hard word. <laughs> it is. Same as entrepreneur. Oh, was every like, time. Oh my God. <laughs> Matt and definitely. Another one. That's a no-go. <laughs> so it's like, let's try and not rely on the algorithm. However, I do think, um, yeah, so having really, I think, is an important lead magnet is, is pretty much uh, essential. Yes. I think it's essential. Yeah. And I like and that. And then because... there's ways of like finding people through like, whether that be Facebook groups or but having a direction to take people on because people don't just want to go straight to buying unless you're lucky and you really have got your messaging like freaking spot on. Yeah. The chances are is that they need something from you first. And so we look at that. Mm, yeah, I love that. And having those, because I think those for me is where the clarity comes in for a uh, an entrepreneur um, in the way of like, okay, I'm logically, I've got this, this, and this set up. So it means that what are my needle moving activities for the day? Yeah. That either they're happening without me, or I've got to do this one thing that has this knock on effect and everything else starts to happen in the background. Yeah. That's what you want, isn't it? hundred percent. And it's like, I grew a Facebook group last year and it is a slog and it does take time, but I maybe focused on it for like an hour a day. And then I was like, that is my needle moving activity. And through that group, I've grown my email list by about 2000. The group has like over 4,000 people in it. I get content ideas from it. I can sell in it. I've got um, like, li literally it's just like to me that's like such a great project to look yeah. at and a lot of people don't look at it and yeah, there's like 70 million Facebook groups which is more than the population of the UK I had to look wow. that up but it's more like than the population of the UK so it's like <laughs> okay so you can borrow people's audiences as well but I, th I just think there's loads of ways that you can get your lead magnet out to the right people or at least 
have somewhere where you're nurturing them and starting the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I love that. Where can people find you? Um, Probably my best bet is Instagram, which is Mills underscore Gray, G-R-A-Y. Um, yeah, come in. I've come in I do, yeah, I have a podcast as well. So um, that's called Soul Leaders. Um, hence my live podcast event. <laughs> <laughs> we'll link everything in the bio. But yeah. thank you so, so much for coming on. I knew it was going to be a good conversation. We, we've we had many, many a chat where we're like, oh, you've been to us. You've got a dog called. The- oh, you- like there's so many little crazy connections with us so I knew it was going to be an amazing call but just to finish off if you had to sum up the experience so far in I'll give you one word but you can have more if you like I'm not gonna you know be a stickler what would it be game changing oh I love it (laughs) I love it I love it and I I, you can completely see and tell and spicy mills all the way I I tell you all the time I'm like bring it bring it (laughs) I, I love spicy meals. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I cannot wait for people to listen. Uh, make sure make sure you're going to follow and say hello and go over t- to Mills World. She really is amazing. Thank you for coming thank on. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. It's been amazing. My pleasure. Mwah. Bye, everyone.